Today we take you on a journey northward along the Datongxian High-Speed Railway to explore the new developments in industries along the route. Multiple hospitals and traditional Chinese medicine clinics in Shanxi have introduced the Shanxi version of sour plum soup, attracting many citizens. Let's visit the Datong Museum to learn about the history and culture of ethnic integration in the Asian city of Datong. Hello and welcome to Exploring Shanxi, I'm Zhang Yi. The Datong Xi'an High-Speed Railway runs through 20 densely populated and economically active cities and counties in Shanxi. Over the past decade, this vital transportation artery has accelerated the flow of people, goods, information, and the capital between regions. Today, we take you on a northward journey along the Datong Xi'an High-Speed Railway to explore the new industrial developments along the route. This is Taiyuan South Station, the heart of the Datong Xi'an High-Speed Railway. From here, we head north on train D5368. In just two hours, we arrive at the Ceramic E Town Incubation Center in Huairan City, Shuozhou. Every day, multiple live streaming rooms here are busy broadcasting. Huairan Ceramics is a Chinese National Geographic indication product. In 2022, Huairan Ceramics was selected as one of Shanxi's first key specialized towns. Today, 53 ceramic companies in Huairan City have an annual production capacity of 3.5 billion pieces, with an annual output value of nearly 6.3 billion yuan, or about 870 million U.S. dollars. Wang Shibi has been in the Bone China business for over 20 years. Now, the high-end Bone China products produced by his company are not only sold to the Yangtze River Delta and Pearl River Delta regions, but also highly favored by Russian and Korean merchants. In the past two years, we have noticed a significant increase in the frequency of visits by out-of-town customers to Shanxi, thanks to the opening of the Datong Xi'an High-Speed Railway. In the waiting hall of Datong South Station, a direct sales store named after the Datong Dailies is filled with various yellow flower products. Passengers traveling north and south always choose to purchase a few items. I've heard that Datong Dailies are very popular now, so I thought I would bring some back for my relatives and friends this time. A small Dailies direct sales store reflects the dramatic transformation of the little Dailies into a major industry driving the prosperity of Datong. In 2023, the total industrial chain output value of yellow flowers exceeded 2.2 billion yuan, or about 300 million U.S. dollars. The sales channels for daylilies at Datong South Station are broader. In the first half of this year, the sales revenue of daylilies was 183,000 yuan, or about 25,000 U.S. dollars, with an increase of over 15%. As people's awareness of health and wellness continues to grow, more and more people are favoring tea drinks that relieve summer heat and nourish the stomach. Recently, several hospitals and traditional Chinese medicine clinics in Shanxi have introduced the Shanxi version of sour plum soup, attracting many citizens. In the past few days, staff at various traditional Chinese medicine hospitals and clinics in Taiyuan have mixed ingredients like sour plums, hawthorns, and dried tangerine peel in specific proportions to create the Shanxi version of sour plum soup. This soup is not only deliciously sweet and sour, but also has the effects of quenching thirst, relieving dampness, and alleviating restlessness. The ingredients are trustworthy, and the taste is pleasantly sweet and sour. Kids especially love it. We have developed two types of sour plum soup this time. The appetizing sour plum soup is mainly for children, with the functions of invigorating the spleen, nourishing the stomach, and producing saliva. The other sour plum soup is designed for adults to nourish the stomach. Sour plum soup exudes a light aroma of sour plums and has a slightly medicinal taste with a sweet and sour flavor, highlighting its characteristics of color, aroma, and taste. It cools down heat, relieves thirst, invigorates the spleen, and dispels dampness. With its reasonable price and effective health benefits, the Shanxi version of sour plum soup has quickly gained popularity, with sales steadily increasing. 
The popularity of traditional Chinese medicine health products among fans cannot be separated from their adaptability and responsiveness. In addition to sour plum soup, various hospitals and traditional Chinese medicine clinics have successfully introduced a variety of Chinese herbal teas to meet the diverse needs of consumers. Datong, with over 2,300 years of history, is a city rich in heritage. Its unique geographical location has fostered the millennium of ethnic integration. Today, we take you inside the Datong Museum to explore the essence and soul of this ancient city. I am the Datong Museum Museum Zhang Weiyi. 大同市博物馆是一座综合性的博物馆，一九五九年正式成立，对外开放，也是国家一级博物馆。我们大同市博物馆以历史推进的方式去承展，以情景再现的方式去呈现。走进大同市博物馆之后，首先映入眼帘的就是巨幅壁画《北魏贵胄雏形图》。那么我们把它特意的展示在这里，其实也是凸显了大同民族融合的文化特色。中国历史上第一次大的民族融合是在秦，而第二次大的民族融合就是在北魏。大同作为北魏都城，长达近百年，是中国北方的政治、经济、文化中心，更是国际化的大都市。加上这一时期丝绸之路的繁荣。这片土地上，鲜卑、契丹、女真、匈奴与汉族相互汇聚、相互交织在一起，所以一时间，胡汉文化、南北文化，甚至是中西亚文明，都在这里交流汇聚。司马金龙墓当中的七画屏风，可以说是我们的镇馆之宝，展现了当时在民族融合之下的。最高的艺术成就，在整幅漆画木板屏风当中呢，可以展现出拓跋鲜卑来到平城之后不断汉化的痕迹。它从内容上的帝王、贤臣、孝子、烈女，都是展现了我们的儒家文化。除此之外呢，我们在上面还可以看到有大片的墨迹以及榜题文字，是魏碑的展现。魏碑呢，其实它是由隶书向楷书过渡的阶段，也是拓跋鲜卑来到平城之后所创新的一种全新的字体。它在我们中国书法艺术上也占据有非常高的地位。山西自古便是中原汉民族和塞外游牧民族的接触、战争、相知、相融的一个缓冲地带。而大同则是这个地带的最前沿。大同市博物馆作为承载历史的重要载体，那么我们也希望让每一位走进大同市博物馆的观众，了解大同的历史，了解民族融合，了解丝绸之路上的文明共建。That's all for today's exploring Shanxi. Before we go, don't forget to scan the QR code.